video I made about my MATLAB program uh, to evaluate the probability of certain Champions League teams making it to the quarterfinals from the round of 16. Um, and so the way this works is basically if we look at the group stage, um, the groups are really interesting. Like we have uh, Liverpool that surprisingly only finished second in the group compared to Napoli, which is uh, now which is first, um, which is very good. And Ajax didn't even make it into the into the top two. So they're in Europa League. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, but not even uh, Barcelona made it. Uh, and then you have a uh, Group H, which was very interesting, where Benfica actually, they won one to six um, and scored like three goals in the final however many minutes. And uh, that ended up after a series of many tiebreakers, since they're basically equal in against goals uh, for in the head to head as well, because there was a one one draw in both situations. Uh, so yeah, we have very interesting groups, and so this uh, brought the question uh, based on the different groups that are here. Uh, so this is the program uh, five thirty eight uh, website, it's, uh, and uh, it gives you the. SPI or soccer power index of each football team. Also, uh, based on these SPIs, if we look at previous Champions League games, like for example, uh, the finals of uh, last season, uh, there's a uh, 93.1 minus 85.6. So there's a 7.5 point difference between these teams in terms of SPI, which is a thing that rises as you do better against the team you're playing, it falls as uh, you do worse or lose or whatever. Um, and then so here it gives a probability based on this using the ranked probability score of the NOAA. Uh, and it's just a lot of st statistics and uh, whatever. Uh, and then so what I first did was I tried modeling it by going to past previous years. Uh, so for the last season, I'd go down days and see how the SPI changes and what the affects the win probability. And then, so if we run this first program, um, we <coughs> we end up finding this pretty neat correlation uh, between the difference in SPI and the probability of winning. Um, and this is pretty valid f uh, from the values of zero to <coughs> around like 10 or 11 or something like that. Uh, I haven't really checked for greater SPI differences because uh, the only reliable um, games that are held in a neutral setting, so there's no home or away because home or away does affect the win probabilities uh, based on like how this works. Um, so I just collected the data this way for every game that was taken in a, that was played in a neutral environment. Uh, and then uh, we had however many data points, uh, and then um, from this, we got these coefficients for some uh, quadratic regression formula that I slap into the second function. But let's first talk about the first function. So in the first function, uh, this one, uh, what it mainly does is based on these two cell arrays, the first one with the group winners and the second one with the runner-ups, um, you are going to put in any team. So for example, uh, let's say I pick Napoli. Uh, we have Napoli and then the group winners, cell array, group runner-ups. And then what this does is it first separates the data from the headers because we're not really concerned about the club, SPI, group, league bullshit and all that. Um, and then so over here we have the different, uh, uh, we have all the if statements. So if, um, so if it's a group winner, then uh, set this value to true and get its team stats from the group winner cell array. Uh, otherwise, if it's um, a group runner up so it compares the uh, string of the team name with um, every uh, bit of the first column of this and then makes a mask based off of that um, and then it runner up true otherwise output this team uh, using the sprint def function is not qualified for the champions league round of 16 um, and then uh, later on we have so if it's a winner then we're going to run uh, these sets so we'll first because obviously in the Champions League, um, teams from the same association, so if both teams play in the Serie A, such as uh, uh, Inter and uh, Napoli, uh, they will not be, it's not possible to make them uh, confront each other. Uh, so for example, of all the teams that, so Napoli can only be seeded against teams that are second place in the group. So although we have PSG, 
uh, which is second place. Uh, we also have Inter Milan, which is uh, in our. It's not in the same group, but it's in a di it's in the same association, so we can't be matched up against them. And Liverpool, they're from the same group as us, so we can't be matched up against them either. And then, for example, um, uh, Milan as well. Uh, they're in, although they're in the second, um, although they're part of the people that could be technically matched up against, since they're from the same association as us, we can't. So uh, after running these two masks, that leaves us with, after running uh, this section of code, and by the way, we can put any team name in here. Uh, if we put a team name that isn't on here, like Roma, uh, for example, it's going to give us errors. It's going to say Roma are not qualified for the UEFA Champions League round of 16. And then uh, if we put, for example, um, so let's go back to Napoli. Uh, and we go back earlier, it's going to give us all the <coughs> possible confrontations. So club and SPI, we have RB Leipzig that can be confronted based on the uh, masks over here of um, if uh, they're in a different group and a different league, because um, both have to be true. And then um, there's also Eintracht Frankfurt, uh, Borussia Dortmund, Club Bruges, and uh, Paris Saint-Germain that we can face. Um, <laughs> And then so what this uh, so after we get this information, this is part of the output, uh, we put this into a second function uh, called uh, UCL RO 16 W or round of 16 win versus the UCL test, which was the first function. And what this does is basically uh, take the SPI of the team. So t pull out the team statistics, which in this case would just be uh, team stats so it's going to be Napoli and then the SPI AD 2.7 what group it played and uh, the association so Italy some iteration loop begins where we have a for a for loop for I is uh, one to the number of rows of this output of uh, potential team matches minus one because we're not interested in this first row only these next five uh, what that ends up doing is uh, as it iterates throughout these values, slap them into the quadratic regression to get the probability output based on my model. And then um, output all of this after it iterates through all of them into a celery um, called preds or predictions, where we have the round of 16 win probability, which is the average of all these probability values uh, based on the SPI difference between Napoli and um, <coughs> whatever team is being iterated through. And then based off of this, it sorts the data as part of this uh, truncated output um, where we're only concerned on the last five rows or uh, last however many. Uh, and it um, sorts these in order to find what our hardest matchup will be, the SPI of that team and the win probability, and what the easiest their SPI and win probability will be. And then so from all this, if we look at the stats for Napoli based on my model, uh, the round of 16 win probability is uh, 60%. Hardest matchup will be against PSG because they have an SPI of 87.5 and there's only a 41.7 win probability against them. But our easiest matchup will be against Club Bruges and their uh, SPI is 66.9. Uh, so we have a win probability of 0.816%, uh, like, uh, of 81.6%, uh, sorry. And then so based on this... Um, uh, model I have, I can compare it with the original 538 model um, to see how closely it lines up. And we see that actually Napoli has exactly 60% chance to make quarterfinals based on the SPI values. And uh, so that lines up pretty well with uh, my model. And then we can uh, pick any other team as well. For example, if we go back to UCL groups, like let's say for example, PSG wasn't in well, actually, let's do something else. So let's say we pick a team that's in uh, uh, this group runner-up section, such as, uh, let's see, uh, Liverpool, for example. Because Liverpool is a very strong team, but since they're only second in the group, now they're up against like um, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, uh, Man City, and all. Well, Man City, they can't because it's the same association. Uh, but... Um, yeah, if we put Liverpool, we can run the code again, and they have only 53% chance of going on to round of 16. Like, again, this is all statistics, but I just think it's interesting to see that, although this is a much stronger team than Napoli, uh, based on different matchups, uh, um, 
it affects what round like what the probability is of actually making these quarterfinals and then um also we have uh, club bruges so their win probability is 11 percent or something according to the 538 model it was um 18 percent so my model is a bit off from what they used uh but i mean then again um that's just because they have such an extreme point difference to the point where it actually is a negative probability of winning because my rps model I tried to figure out how to mathematically model it, but I need to have a lot more data, um, and I just don't have the time or statistical know-how on how to uh, get all the data for all the different confrontations and how that causes the SPI to affect win probability and all that. So I just use this uh, bare bones model, and um, so for huge uh, SPI differences like ninety two point eight minus like sixty six point whatever. Uh, like a 26 point difference. My model was only accurate for the first 11 or something. Uh, whoops, wrong code. I still got simmered. Uh, anyways, yeah, my MATLAB froze up, but um, that's basically how the um, that's basically how the code works. So I have this first function, and then I run it through a second function, um, and then it gives me the output for what the hardest matchup will be and the probabilities. Um, and, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this to some extent. Hopefully it was somewhat interesting. Uh, I know MATLAB isn't the most popular, uh, coding language, but as a physics major, it's one that I use a lot. Um, and, um, and yeah, thank you for watching.